How are you, sir? I am extremely well. Yeah. Very, good. very well. Good to see you. Sorry, Great I got to so, see you, Wayne. so excited because I love your new Roger Pond. Thank this, you. This thing is sick, man. <laughs> you know, I mean, like, you look at it and aesthetically, your mind is trying to comprehend exactly what's going on with the case because it's so complex. And then you just explained to me this is using an all new technology that yeah. has not been applied to watchmaking before. Talk to me about that technology. So it's called additive manufacturing. Uh, I wish people could see how it works because it's, it's really science fiction. So basically, um, the, 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 the inspiration of the watch is, is really GT cars, the modern GT cars, and particularly the, uh, the Nida Bay, the structures of those air entries into the engines and the profiling of, of, the, of modern cars. And what is impressive with those modern cars is the fact that there is an extremely rigid structure, but very light. And also, uh, actually, it's emptied in all sorts of places and areas where it doesn't need to be full, okay? Why? Simply for, for reasons of, of weight and, 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 light, and yes, for it to be, to be lighter. Here, when you, you look at the watch in details, you'll see holes on the side on, on every aspect. So, cool. so that you really have the case is turning into a structure more than a real full uh, and, and a field case. And it allows on top to bring this uh, gold uh, Nida Bay structure to apply also on top the, the, the bezel that is in, 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 and the bezel which is in DLC titanium. Dude, this thing's incredible. The thing with this case, you can't do it with regular techniques. Okay, so you can't use CNC and, and produce it. Why? Because of those uh, light and structure. How, what did we do? Uh, we used, uh, so again, uh, additive manufacturing, which is uh, one form of 3D printing. So you're taking uh, uh, um, an alloy, a, a powdered alloy of titanium. So it's really particles of titanium. And with uh, you've got those machines that are uh, melting those particles of titanium through laser to shape, to really create, be able to grow the shape. Incredible. So it's really science fiction, I tell you. And, and you're creating this unique structure, one piece structure uh, that is extremely solid using the same density, the same uh, solidity as titanium, but in a shape that you couldn't do with the, with the regular, uh, regular machines. Uh, it's been used for some time as prototypes, but never uh, in uh, final production. And that's what we're coming up with. Dude, this watch is nuts. This is the first time today I've actually taken off my watch, but I, I need to try this on in person. So I'm you guys need so. to check this out because this thing is nuts. It's like <laughs> if you take, took the case of a Monaco and you gave it to like an alien civilization and they gave it back to you. <laughs> so what uh, uh, Antoine's talking about, it's a form of 3D printing where it's like it's powdered titanium that's being built up. But you take like the, the you know, like, the basic blueprint of the Monaco, but then you put into it so many of these like negative voids, like empty spaces, which are then filled with this kind of like rigid lattice work. Yes, exactly. And Thank you. And it's almost like you're you're excavating every single gram of unnecessary mm -hmm. material to still achieve the same maximum rigidity. And it's so cool looking, right? And think it, of a DTM championship. You yeah. Know those cars yeah. that are regular cars. Yes. That you're emptying. Yes. So you're strengthening the structure. That's exactly the inspiration. You know, well, I, you know, I remember I went to uh, to uh, the factory of one of the big race teams as well. And if you actually open up the carbon fiber pieces, you'll see this like lattice work, this honeycomb structure inside of it. So it, it is, it, you know, precisely comes from that. Now, what's really cool about this watch also is the following, right? Like, um, I've been talking a lot about how I have 18th century fatigue, you know, so I, every like watch brand now is like going back to the 18th century. <laughs> and if we don't like, you know, Jean-Fred Dufour and Hamid Siddiqui did an incredible keynote here at Dubai Watch Week, and they said, healthy competition is vital for the watch industry. And it's super important that people are trying to write the future of watchmaking yes. as well. Because if you still just keep going back to the old, like, uh, you know, treasure chest of the past and keep replicating it, we don't advance as an industry. I, I'm, I'm that something. I mean, everybody talks about hierology and refer to the masters of the past, what they managed to do. And you go back to the complication and talk about current complication. But they're grand complication of the past. The guys who invented those grand complications. Yeah. Let's. I mean, I always refer to uh, to Abraham Le Beguet. when he made the first tourbillon. Okay, all his contemporary partners, they they thought he was crazy. Yes, he was not copying anybody. He's like an alien. He was an alien. <laughs> he was doing this Martian yeah. watch, coming from the space, trying to perform better, and he was looking at the future. So all the people we're referring to 
They've never looked at the past. Right. They've never looked backwards. They've always looked forward. Correct. The respect of a hierology is this projection into the future. That's what hierology should be. Yes. Should always be. Yes. And and that's why sometimes it's it's uh, sometimes uh, I'm being challenged because people say, oh, Tiger is not hierology. Tiger is by essence inspired by hierology, not not in a traditional way. But if you are avant-garde, if you are talking about innovation, you're talking about hierology. Whatever the price, it's not a matter of price. It's a matter of mentality and philosophy. And that's exactly what this watch is about. On the wrist, this thing is just um, incredible. You know, I mean, I love the the split second function. Also, uh, it's also a movement that is. Yes. I know it's a collaboration of Bushell. Yes. But um, also, <laughs> which incidentally, there's other companies using that uh, movement, and the price is quite significant. So it's actually <laughs> a good value proposition. Also, since it's so beautifully finished as well, you have for now the high watch making watches this, this checkerboard pattern, which is made by hand gratte as well. Yes. Which is stunning, right? Yes. Yes. Um, it's it's we are we I love the fact that we are using the checkered flag. As our signature for our hierology pieces, it's of course part of our of our history of our culture, and uh, it is creating us. It's uh, the signature of our candidates. I absolutely love it. I love also the contrast between this very matte, yeah, uh, like titanium. I guess it's part of the, the the sintering process as well that you get this very dark kind of um, yes. uh, surface, and then the addition of like uh, high polished yellow gold, which is just such a stunning combination for me. This is a genuinely awesome. Option. Thank you very much. How, how many you. of these are you making? We're making thirty. I mean, it's called and and it's it's sick, dude. Very very precise. It's called uh, Monaco Split Second Air One. Uh, Air because One. Clearly, right. we have this idea of creating new variations around the technology of additive manufacturing. And then the big question today, you know, what is what is interesting with this innovation? It's Forging. It's creating space for creativity that wasn't expected by the designers. Mm. They need to rethink the way they're designing cool. because it's a new technology. And the production techniques are, are liberating. Yeah. You so, can go anywhere, right? Yeah, but you didn't anticipate this right. because, of course, when even as a designer, you create your own barriers, you know, because technically, you know, you can't do that, you can't do that. You have to erase those barriers and to rethink the new the new cases. And and the excitement, but the challenge a little bit for the for the team is actually to change their their paradigm to a certain uh, to a certain perspective and that but that's where the excitement lies because clearly you're you're going into a you're opening the door to the to to new dimension so it's quite exciting right now dude i love this watch um okay so the other thing i want to talk to you about is uh, i'm really old and so <laughs> back back in the day when you would like show up at basel fair right one of the first booth you will want to go to was tag Heuer, yeah right because it was like what are those guys going to do next you were at the forefront of like technical, material, every form of innovation conceivable. And I still remember the, you know, the days when we went to go look at the V4, this crazy belt ripping watch with a linear automatic uh, winding mechanism as well. I remember uh, the micro timer, the micro girder, which incidentally, I was just reminded that it won a GPHG award for the Aiguille d'Or. Yeah. It was a place where like the highest level of technical innovation was, was coming, but even sometimes even beyond your expectations as well, right? Um, we're going to see that again. Uh, listen, no, no, it's, it's, and it's, it goes beyond yeah. time. Okay. I think if we don't ask ourselves about, uh, I think uh, the, the keynote of Jean Frederic Dufour was it's time to dare. Yeah. Or time, okay. Oh, that's a really good way to put it. You're absolutely right. And, and frankly, it's time to, to enchant and to, to push the boundaries. Okay. You need to be excited and think, what is Tango going to do? But what are the others going to do? Where are you going? How I am, am I going to be transported? But what I see, yeah. by the stories. I mean, like it or not like it, but it's, it goes beyond the notion of taste. It's about, are you taking me into new dimensions? That's what art is giving and watchmaking is a form of art. So we need to do that. We need to be daring. And, and frankly, if you tell me, if in five years you go to the booth and you tell me, I'm disappointed, I was not shocked this time, mm. it means we would have shocked you for four years. I'll be thinking, okay, fair enough, but fair, fair enough that I also impressed you over the last past year. That's what, that's what I, would, I would dream that sometimes you have such high expectation in terms of surprise and disruption. Right. That at some point you may be disappointed but because we recreated this habit of, of, of expectations and looking forward to the next salon because something crazy comes in one way or another. But that's, what, that's our job. I, again, that's going largely beyond the, 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 the timing notion only. So that's, that's completely where we are. And, and it's in our name, Technique d'avant-garde. Right. I mean, if we don't do it, who's going to do it? 
So I, I, I mean, we'll try to deliver that. It, and of course, it's a challenge because we have to push ourselves. But clearly, that's our philosophy. It's pretty exciting, man. Uh, I have to say, and you have rallied against. Uh, you have rallied <laughs> around you. One of the coolest teams in watchmaking. Yes, right? there are cool guys yes. around. I just met your your, your you. designers, but also then of course you've got the legend Carol Forrest yeah, yeah. as well. And I can't wait to see what you you guys are going to cook up. Well, all I can say <laughs> is like like Carol for the last year that I've seen her, I was in the GPH jury with her as well. Uh, she's so fired up, right? <laughs> I mean, she's like I think probably one of if not you know if not the greatest technical mind working in contemporary watchmaking today. And she you know when she's laser focused in this way. I'm sure we're going to see some insane stuff next year. So I'm really excited. So I, I love what you've done, um, Antoine. You know, you really reconnected uh, Type Warrior with its roots uh, for precision timing. Thank you so much. The difference between victory Thank and you. defeat, right, with the, the F1. And now you're taking that language, but expressing it in ways we didn't even expect. Thank you so much. Dude, yeah. awesome. Oh, thanks a lot. I'm really touched. Wow. So guys, if you like our content, don't forget to like, uh, subscribe, and comment below. My bro Antoine Pin is uh, kicking <laughs> ass over at Tag Warrior. Stay tuned.